Oh man, the Avengers Infinity War trailer has finally dropped and it's even cooler than I could have hoped. We noticed a ton of tiny details in this that we're gonna break down for you right now. The trailer begins with the Avengers reciting Nick Fury's original mission statement for founding the group. So even though Samuel L. Jackson's not in the movie, he's here in spirit. Early in the trailer, we see Thor on a spaceship peering out. Now, given the cliffhanger that Thor Ragnarok left on, you can wonder, is this the Asgardian refugee ship? Is it Thanos' ship? Or maybe it's the Milano? I think it's the Milano because we see Thor talking to the Guardians of the Galaxy later in the trailer. In fact, I think he spends most of the movie working with the Guardians of the Galaxy. And that's what he's doing in this shot when he's pulling a space Samson working the levers of some giant machine. But what are he and the Guardians doing? Well, they're answering a distress call on Xandar, where the Power Stone is locked away. At one point, Loki steps among dead-ass Guardians and hands the Tesseract to some unseen figure, who's probably Thanos. Remember, Loki's job in the first Avengers film was to retrieve the Tesseract for Thanos, so now he's making good on that promise. Now Thanos can use the Tesseract to teleport to other planets and collect the Infinity Stones, which is why I think Xandar is second on his list. This shot of him stepping from a portal is likely on Xandar. In fact, the planet from the opening shot is more than likely Xandar as well and this shot of Thanos adding the Power Stone to his gauntlet is Xandar, but the trailer cuts it together to look like Iron Man is fighting him in the same moment. The trailer definitely shows us that the first two Infinity Stones Thanos collects are the Space and Power Stones. All right, now let's go back to Earth, where Bruce Banner has crashed through the ceiling of Doctor Strange's Sanctum Sanctorum, while Wong and Doctor Strange look down at him. This is also a nod to the Infinity Gauntlet comics, which began with the Silver Surfer crashing through Doctor Strange's ceiling and warning them that Thanos was coming. They must have called Tony Stark right away and told him, hey, you have a stray Avenger in our house because soon Tony's standing in the foyer with the three of them. And Tony's also wearing the hoodie that he wears in one of the opening shots of the trailer when there's destruction raining all around him. Tony's shirt looks like it has an arc reactor or some kind of machine built into it. Probably his new armor just unfolds from his chest, which that's kind of silly. In the first Iron Man, he creates a whole suit that he has to step into. Then in the second movie, the briefcase unfolds. Then in Civil War, his gloves appear from nowhere, and now his whole suit's on his chest. That thing does not obey the laws of physics at all. All right, then we see Spider-Man on the school bus and hairs on his arm standing on end, which confirms Spider-Sense. Spider-Man Homecoming director John Watts said they didn't use Spider-Sense in that movie because it had already been explored in his other films. But we knew that he had to have Spider-Sense because of this shot in Captain America Civil War when Spider-Man dodges something Winter Soldier throws at him without seeing it. There's an enormous circular machine floating above Manhattan. My guess is this opens up a portal so Thanos can bring his entire armada into Earth. Thanos probably shows up in New York early in the film to collect the Time Stone and destroys a huge part of the city. That's these shots when we see Iron Man facing off with him and this shot where Tony sees destruction raining all around him. Now let's look at the Vision and Scarlet Witch. This was a big surprise. They're in a room together and this could be romantic or they could be hiding out. It looks like it could be a hotel room or maybe just a nice house somewhere. The big thing here is that the Vision is in human form. This is something he does sometimes in the comics using a holographic projector and calling himself Victor Shade. Now as for where they're at, later on we see someone who is probably Corvus Glaive ripping the Mind Stone from the Vision's head. The license plate behind him is a long rectangle, meaning this is probably the United Kingdom or somewhere in Europe. So perhaps the Scarlet Witch in hiding went back to her homeland Sokovia. Then we get our first look at the Black Order. This is Proxima Midnight throwing a spear at Steve Rogers. And this doesn't seem to happen in Wakanda. I think it happens in the same European country that Wanda and the Vision are hiding in, like Steve's maybe keeping tabs on them. This is also probably the same scene when Black Widow shoves a spear into something, probably a member of the Black Order. The Black Order are minions of Thanos who he sends out to collect the different Infinity Stones. Then we get to the Wakanda portion of the trailer where we notice a ton of Easter eggs. Black Panther is giving orders to an army, meaning that Thanos is coming to Wakanda, probably for the Soul Stone. If the Soul Stone has been in Wakanda for generations, this could explain why the country has such advanced technology. In the comic books, the Black Panthers go to a city of the dead called Necropolis. This is where they go to die and also to share the knowledge of their ancestors. Black Panther even hints about this in Captain America Civil War. In my culture, death is not the end. It's more of a stepping off point. You reach out with both hands and bust and segment. They lead you into the green veld where you can run forever. It could be that Necropolis exists in the MCU and that it's where the Soul Stone is hidden away. My money says that we're going to see the Soul Stone in the Black Panther film. And this also explains why all the characters seem to converge in Wakanda. We see glimpses of Captain America, Iron Man, Hulk, everyone but Thor and Ant-Man. And I like that Captain America has a beard in this movie. Because during the shawarma scene in the Avengers, Chris Evans actually had a full beard that he grew out for the movie Snowpiercer. 
That's why when you watch it, Chris Evans keeps his hand on his jaw during the entire scene. All right, we see Spider-Man in the Iron Spider suit that was teased at the end of Homecoming, landing on top of Thanos' machine. I think this is probably in Wakanda. At the end of Spider-Man Homecoming, he's not an Avenger, he doesn't have the suit. So it makes more sense if Thanos attacks the city, messes everything up, and Tony rallies the troops and gives Peter the new suit. And later, Thanos smashes Spider-Man into the floor, and these carvings make me think that this takes place in Wakanda as well. We see Bruce in Wakanda standing by a piece of the Hulkbuster armor, and he's talking to someone wearing a black jumpsuit and an elbow pad. This is probably Natasha, and it could be their first meeting since she shoved him into the pit during the Avengers Age of Ultron. And later, we can see the Hulkbuster fighting outside of Wakanda. Steve, wearing his cap uniform, which is now symbolically tarnished, is fighting Thanos' outriders outside of Wakanda's walls. Winter Soldier has a new robot arm, and he's joined the Wakandan standing beside Steve. We get a great shot of the Falcon flying over the battle, and you can see the Hulkbuster fighting below. And this is the first time we've gotten to see a giant pitched battle in the MCU, and I'm pretty excited for it. One of the last shots in the trailer is everybody running toward the camera. We have Black Panther, his bodyguard, Natasha, Steve, Hulk, Falcon, and War Machine. And this is our only look at War Machine, so I'm glad that he's getting better after his injury in Civil War. The only Infinity Stone we didn't see was the Reality Stone, currently held by the Collector. My guess is that Thanos is saving that one for last. So in the next movie, the Avengers are going to have to follow him out into space. If you noticed anything that I didn't, please leave it in the comments below, and don't forget to subscribe. For Screen Crush, I'm Ryan Airy.